What's going on you guys? Today is January 16th. It's pretty cold outside. I think it's like in the low 30s. I really want to get out fishing, but first I just wanted to go over something that a lot of you guys ask me all the time, which is what knots do I tie? So today we're going to go over three of my favorite knots and pretty much the only three knots that I personally tie when I'm fishing and whether that's musky fishing, bass fishing, or I'm out saltwater fishing. We're also going to go over some of my favorite lines and which knots that I'm tying with these lines. But first, before we get into that, I just wanted to let you guys know that I am going to be at the Richmond Fishing Expo this weekend on Friday and Saturday. So if you guys are going to be there as well, make sure you come up and say hi. I'd love to meet all of you guys, you know, talk some fishing and just hang out a little bit. So if you guys are going to be there, um, follow me on Instagram. I'll post on my story when I'm going, when I'm gonna be there, and all that stuff. So I'll leave that linked in the description below if you guys aren't already following my Instagram. It's just the easiest way to get in touch with me. So let's go downstairs and take a look at some of these knots. Okay, so before we start talking about knots, we need to start talking about the line that we're tying these knots with. So I'm gonna go over, you know, three, four of my favorite lines to throw and why. So. We're gonna start with the fluorocarbon. So 90% of the time I have the Seaguar and Vizex tied on. This is one of my favorite lines because it's super like ridiculously silky smooth. It's also really abrasion resistant, it's really good with knots, and it's just really low memory. Granted, I mean, fluorocarbon does have a little bit more memory than say uh, monofilament and obviously a lot more than braid because braid is super limp, but this is my go-to line. Um, the only thing about it is it's a little bit on the high end, it's a little expensive. But if you guys want a little bit cheaper option, the Seaguar Red Label is really good. My buddy John Hudgens got me on this stuff last season. And I mean, it has a little bit more memory, but as long as you have some line conditioner, this is a really great second choice. Another good fluorocarbon I throw is Sunline. Um, this is like a backup. I kind of flip flop between the Seaguar and the Sunline depending on what I can get at the local Dick's Sporting Goods. So that's my fluorocarbon lines that I'm generally throwing. Um, as far as Monofilament, I like to throw the Berkley Trilene. I mean, they've figured out monofilament. I don't think it really matters who you go with. Monofilament is monofilament. Um, a lot of guys throw the big game. That stuff's really good too. Uh, but I don't throw too much monofilament. Generally, I'm gonna go with the copolymer, like this P-Line CXX. This is some of the strongest line that I've ever used in my life. I use 10 pound generally for my um, crankbait needs, whether it's a crankbait or a suspending jerkbait. This stuff can pull up a freaking tree with 10 pound test. This stuff does have a lot of memory, but for a cast and retrieve bait, like a crankbait, this is good stuff. For braid, um, I have a uh, J braid. I got this when I was in Costa Rica, so didn't have much of a choice there, but if I do have a choice, I'm gonna throw Power Pro. That's just what I'm used to. It's something I'm comfortable with throwing. So those are the lines that I'm using 100% of the time. I usually don't veer off from any of those too much, but I'm gonna show you the different knots that I tie with different lines, so let's get into that. All right, oh, I forgot the most important part. Okay, so for a little bit of visual help, I'm gonna be using some climbing rope today and a carabiner. But before I get into that, I just wanna say do not come to me saying that you tried to tie a palomar knot when you went climbing. It might work, but there's also a really good chance it's not gonna work. So just as a quick disclaimer, and for my own safety, I'm gonna show you a quick top roping knot. So you uh, make a figure eight in your rope. This is if you're climbing, by the way. And then you're gonna run this tag in through your harness, and you're just gonna follow that figure eight right back through. Boom. And that is your figure eight climbing knot. So if you go climbing, use this. This is just for visual presentation. So there you go. You're also supposed to uh, put a little safety knot up here, but if you're climbing in a gym, they like to see it. It doesn't really matter because this is a self-tightening knot. It'll never undo itself. So that was just a little disclaimer. Again, don't come to me saying you tied a palomar knot when you were climbing and broke your leg. I don't wanna hear about that bad story. So let's get into the fishing knots a little bit. First, we are going to start off with the good old-fashioned Palomar knot. 
This is the first knot I ever learned. Uncle Jack taught me this when I was like 13. And this works great for braid and monofilament. A lot of guys can tie it with fluorocarbon. Personally, I cannot. I break off my polymer knots on fluorocarbon like 90% of the time, so I had to switch it up to a different knot. But I have a good friend and one of the best fishermen I know, Matt McCluskey. He only ties polymer knots and never breaks off. So you're going to take your line, run it through. Make sure you leave yourself enough space and then you're just going to pop it right back through there. You're going to want ample enough line on both sides so you can make a very simple overhand knot just like so. And you're going to take this extra loop end that you have and run it directly through the bait just like that. And I like to pull these up a little bit just to make it a little bit easier for it to cinch down. And then you're just going to pull. Make sure you wet up your line too. Obviously, I'm using climbing rope again, but if you're using your monofilament, just make sure you wet it up. Or if you're going with the fluorocarbon with the polymer, make sure you wet it up. And there you go. That is your polymer knot. And this is, again, really great for braid or monofilament, but not so much for fluorocarbon on my end. But there you go. So next up, we're going to take a look at the knot that I solely tie with my fluorocarbon, whether I'm throwing a jig, crankbait, Texas rig, it doesn't matter. If I'm throwing fluorocarbon, unless it's a drop shot, I am tying this knot. And it's a little bit different than the Zona Shark knot, and I'll show you why in a second, but that's virtually what this knot is. So you're gonna start it off exactly as if you were tying the polymer knot. So you're gonna run your line through the eye of the hook and then match it run it right back through. You also really want to make sure that you're not overlapping your line because you don't want it to dig into itself. You don't want any overruns, anything like that. So you're going to go like this. I need a lot of line with this because this climbing rope is so freaking big. And then what I like to do is come up top and you're going to pinch it up here and you're going to take this loop end and then wrap it around four times. Okay, so once you get those four wraps in, where you were holding the line in your index finger, you should still have a little bit of a loop. And you're gonna run that line through that loop. And then cinch it down. And again, make sure you wet that fluorocarbon up really, really good. You don't want it to burn itself or cut itself. And the only difference between the way that I tie this knot and the Zona Shark knot is he actually runs the line up, twists it four times, and then puts it through the bottom loop. But I like doing it through the top loop just because I've experienced some very weird phenomenon that I'll just be like getting ready for a cast and kind of, you know, messing with my rod and the jig or Texas rig will literally just fall off. And I have no idea as to why that happens, but it did. I mean, it would just fling off my rod. Very strange. Never broke a fish off when I was tying it that way, but I would just lose my lure. It was the strangest thing. But once you get to this point, you're just going to cut these three tag ends. And yes, you're going to have three tag ends with this line. That is the strongest knot that you can tie with fluorocarbon, in my opinion. I very rarely break fish off anymore. It looks pretty cool. It's a nice, you know, good looking knot. And it's strong. These extra wraps kind of act as like a, a recoil spring, I guess, if you will. So the line won't snap and it really tightens itself down. Really good looking knot. So that's the... Uh, modified Zona Shark knot for you. All right, guys, last but not least, we're gonna take a look at a leader knot. So this is going from braid to fluorocarbon. This is the only leader knot that I tie. I've yet to break one off in the last year or so that I've been tying it. So really the only time that I'm even tying this is on my spinning gear. So basically 20 pound braid to six, eight, or 10 pound fluorocarbon. So we're gonna pretend that this is our main line and this is our leader line. So you're gonna take your leader line, you're going to make a loop just like this. You're going to take your main line, which is your braid, and you're going to pass it through the bottom of this loop. Make sure you give yourself enough line so that you can make seven to ten wraps. I like to pinch all three of them together just like that at the top. And then you're going to start looping this line over top of both the fluorocarbon and braid. 
All right, we're gonna do seven, just because that's a little bit easier with this climbing rope. But once you get that tag in all the way seven times wrapped, you're gonna pass it back through the loop of your leader line. And you're just gonna cinch them all down really good, nice and tight. See, this is what it should look like when it's going to form. And then you're gonna grab both tag ends, and really cinch it down and make sure you wet that thing up really good. And there you have it, that is the Albright knot. This is a good connection knot, so anytime you need to go braid the fluorocarbon, this is my go-to. And again, I've yet to break one of these off. Just make sure to cut both of those tag ends, and you are good to go, guys. There you go. One of the strongest leader knots you can tie right there. So. Whew. Okay, so those are my top three favorite fishing knots, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. The reason I did this was because a lot of you have been asking me which knots that I tie or which knots that I tie with certain lines. So hopefully this covered all of those bases for you all. And again, I just wanted to say one more time that I will be at the Richmond Fishing Expo. So if you see me there, come up and say what's up. Let's talk fishing. So hope you all enjoyed. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for me if you're not already subscribed. And we'll see you on the next one.